Stories are very powerful if you want to remember things and if you want to connect and relate emotionally. That's the main reason why I set up this podcast as a collection of stories, stories from, from, from people. We learn through their stories and their, you know, their life-changing moments, what shaped them. And I hope you can relate to their stories. So you, you can learn about what shaped you, the things in your past, the things in your childhood, the things that you lived through, uh, the things that you've seen and heard and felt, they all shaped you. So I challenge you to think about your own experiences while listening to the stories of the people on this show. Now, today I'm going to talk uh, to uh, Marta Nurianse. And I've met Marta a long time ago, right at the start of when service design became a thing in Europe, right at the start of the whole movement. He's been a designer for a very long time. He's a teacher. He is a strategist. He loves complexity. And we're going to talk about what are good teachers and what are the bad teachers. And we're going to talk about leadership, obviously. And he's going to warn us about the consequences of stereotypes in leadership. We're also going to talk about faking until you make it. We're going to talk about harmony and the importance of disharmony and in the end pivoting. So here we go. I always start telling people that I'm a designer, but what the hell does that actually mean? Um, uh, so for me, that means actually that I'm I'm always trying to um, build solutions or trying to figure out how things work. Actually, that's where it starts. So it's not really about building things or creating things. Yes, that's important, but that actually is not my drive. My drive is really much more focused on being very curious to figure out how how things are. Um, um, constructed and how and and why they are constructed in the way they are so i'm always curious to uncover open the lid and see what's beneath it and how it's working and can i can i really understand what the machinations are in there where where did that fascination start can you remember um I was uh, actually a little bit of a lonely player. So I would have friends over and they would ruin my play. So I would be like, hmm, well, maybe, no, well, just let me do it because this, I know how I want to do it. So please go away. <laughs> so I was always, always building stuff and creating stuff. And I had something which was the most awesome. It was not a uh, Meccano, but it was more simple because I'm not that technical. It was made of wood and it's called silo montage. So it's like a mounting kit with right. screws and bolts and stuff like that. Hmm. And that would really, and I would actually change it because it didn't do what I wanted to do. So I would cut off pieces and, and ruin it probably. But uh, so that, that, that is something that is part of me. And I was drawing stuff and ships. I had this crazy fascination with shipping and big boats and stuff like that. I tried to draw it and I wasn't very good at it, but I kept going probably. <laughs> so. Okay. So, <laughs> and, and so you didn't have a lot of friends, I assume. <laughs> <laughs> well, I would have friends, but I, I would rather, you know, keep them out of my playground, my home playground <laughs> somehow, ah, because okay. they would ruin stuff. So they I would, would just... go outside. Yeah. Avoid having them in my space. <laughs> yeah. Friends, friends ruin stuff. Yeah, that's, yes, that's pretty. Usually they do. Usually they do. Yeah, they do. But so, <laughs> so, so, what about your parents? Did they um, observe that uh, behavior and think, oh? Well, I'm not really sure how they thought about it. I, I, I used to join. My mother was a. a, a she was a designer, actually. She, she was the first graphic designer in art school here in, in The Hague. 
female de female designer. Uh, it was called uh, advertising drawing or something like that. And uh, she was. Well, what do you mean by woman. that? By, what do you mean she was the first? What, what exactly? Well, usually there would be. Uh, so this was somewhere in the fifties or early sixties. Um, there weren't too many uh, female uh, students in art school doing commercial uh, track. So she would do graphic design, typography, and it was dominated by men. There were only men smoking pipes in the classroom, stuff like that. So she was uh, she was quite uh, uh, early in that. And and but later on, she started drawing. So she would be she became an artist and uh, make a lot of uh, drawings. And 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 I would sit in her uh, in her atelier, and I would just be there and you know, work along with her. And I liked the smell of paint and oil paint and stuff like that. And I was always very much intimidated also by it because I, my struggles in drawing exactly what I had in mind, that was usually a big problem also because I had this fantastic constructs in my mind and I could never realize them. So that was also something. So I would, she would see that. She would try to call me. No, it's fantastic. Don't do anything about it. No, I'm not happy with it. It's not good enough. So frustrations. I, re I remember also a lot being a lot of times frustrated. What, how old? How to... old were you uh, when this? Ah, this uh, something like seven, eight, nine around right. that age. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Something like that. Yeah. Ah, and, you, and uh, so you're. Your mother, uh, I mean, is is she the inspiration for because your studies, your yeah, something? yeah. She uh, she had uh, she worked together with some other uh, graphic designers. So she did a lot of uh, publicity for uh, cultural institutions, and she worked together with a few designers, and especially one designer, a close friend, and they would have a studio. So I was really like, wow, that's great if you if you can have a living out of doing that and just being there and and trying to design or create communication with whatever means necessary. I remember they made a, a, a an affiche, a, a poster with spaghetti for, uh, I think it was for Ligeti. My father was a musician, so they did a lot of work for musical uh, ensembles and they played really crazy modern is. music. Sorry, your father still is a musician. Uh, well, he's retired. He's well, retired yeah. now. Yeah, yeah. but can you, you know, retired? You know, can you retire from? Well, being a it's a, uh, well, it's interesting because musicians, uh, other than painters, I think musicians they have also a technique. So it's like sports mm. a little bit. And so, uh, and he was a flutist. So after a few years, when you're around 50, 60, 70, and you're embouchure. It's the the way you you blow through the flute, something like that. That becomes more difficult. And he also had trouble with uh, stress. So he was he at some point, which is a bit strange if you're a performing an artist and you fear the stage. That at some mm. times, at some point, becomes difficult. Sure. So and he was tired of uh, all the politics also involved in trying to get the money and funding and stuff like that. So I think at some point he was just you know I okay. I quit. Okay. So, uh, but uh, so music and 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 sort of art was you know I was immersed in art, uh, uh, which was a, a normal thing for me, but it was actually a bit strange. Of course, so I would go to these really wild, crazy modern uh, concerts, uh, as well as going to a lot of uh, exhibitions of uh, modern artists and stuff like that. So what it was, sounds what very. Was... It was very privileged, actually, but I never experienced it like, because it was for me that was normal. So what was, was weird my, my normal. And, and, and what was strange about those parties? Uh, well, the parties, uh, well, the, the parties were also fun, but that was a bit different. But but the music was, I mean, it was not your average uh, harmonious music. It was really really modern, eh? like uh, Mauricio Cago and Ligeti and. Uh, uh, Eva Gubaidulina, these are really, really modernist uh, composers. And my father was very much involved with these composers and Reimer de Leo and all these uh, uh, music artists. And, uh, and it was, uh, so I had to get used to that kind of music, but of course it's also education. So it became part of my growing up, modern mm -hmm. music, modern art. That was okay. my, uh, my... So you were, uh, so this is when you were eight, nine, so growing up with your with your parents and um what um so then you went why did you choose the school that you went to because you what did you study where, where did you go 
what so happened. I did. I went to the art school in Rotterdam. So I, I remember I was I was doing. Well, was, was that uh, something you you like? That of course you go to an art school because <laughs> there is no other option. Is it? Was there? Because are yeah, you? Are I you? Was, uh, were you yeah. rebellious at all? Or is oh, just like, I'm, I'm, what, sometimes I regret that I was not rebellious as as. Uh, but, but I had a brother. He was very rebellious. So I, I thought like, okay, well he does all the rebellion thing. How, how was he rebellious? I, what, what uh, he, he would do anything which was not allowed so he would you know he would sneak out of his bedroom which was like three floors up and he would jump into the lamppost and then slide down stuff like that like in the movie he, like in the movie he, he was for me he was a movie star he was he did everything he dared everything that i never dared so i wouldn't even step on 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 you know how do you call it the uh, the the side of the 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 roof you know i i i was a scary boy a little bit i was not so uh, such a brave guy and he would do anything he was not scared and if people told him you know jump he would jump he would do all the crazy stuff i would come home very late and then you know laugh at my parents my parents were quite strict but he would just laugh at them so he he did everything so i didn't have to do that i he took away all the all the I mean, stuff from if me. you because if, if you describe your parents in a way, I can imagine that in my mind, they don't sound like strict because they are. They go to wild parties and they're creative yeah. and they're, you know, they're into this <laughs> modern music and all that. And, and then, but then they were very strict. Yeah, but, you know, parents are also just parents. I mean, they, mm. they, the, you know, my mother was very much into biological food and all these things and uh, not too much TV. And I mean, all the same things that, we also do a little bit, but not as strict. But my mother, yeah, she was very uh, strict yeah. on the law. So, things. so your brother was uh, was basically uh, trying, you know, he, he breaking was, out. He was breaking <laughs> out, uh, and 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 because he he did all that, you didn't really have to. Maybe huh. it was easy. I mean, he he would become a, a you know punker. He, he had this uh, huge, and I also I I copied him. Of course, he was my older brother, so I I wanted to do that. But then I would be very clean. I was a very clean punker. <laughs> he, clean was, punker. He, he was very dirty. I mean, he would smell. I would I was like, yeah, I want to be, you know, I want to you know, I want to be looking like a rebel, but I wasn't really yeah. a rebel. Yeah, you 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 will you will you were a clean rebel. You were that a, a clean the one, rebel, the one person that actually washed. So yes, yes. Sad, so uh, yeah, so, the, yeah. so a bit the, sad. the clean yeah. punker. So yeah. your brother, I is he part of sort of um, you know the way you developed? What what is there? What well, is the I mean. Yeah, so it's a very close relationship. I mean, we were also a bond because I remember my parents would also, they would be very, uh, how do you call that, um, intensive. They would be very intensive and they would have a lot of fights together also, uh, really fights. And, you know, these these biological breads from the 70s or the 80s, they were not the nice tasting breads. They were like bricks. And if you would eat them, you would eat one slice and you would have enough for three days or something like that. So they would throw these at each other also. Something. <laughs> and they would go through windows. Bread fights. So, no, yes, no. yes. But, the, but they were scary. I mean, I was, I was a bit scared. So I remember my brother would always protect me. We would be sitting on the stairs waiting until, you know, things got more quiet. So they were very intense with each other. They loved each other, but they were also very intense. And that was, mm. you know, it was also... So we were banding together to uh, to keep safe. Is, is your I mean, they wouldn't hit, they wouldn't be dangerous. They wouldn't hit us, but it was very intense. I remember that. And, and is your brother still like that? Um, well, no, he's getting older, of course. But he's, I mean, he's 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 always choosing his own path. I mean, he was... 19 until he finally got his uh, his uh, graduate from high school he would jump on his motorcycle and would drive to a girlfriend he made in he actually met her in the US when we went on a trip in the US he met her and he, a beautiful Italian girl and he went to follow her and he would drive on his motorcycle on his 19th to Rome and never he never really came back so he was out he never came back he well, was, I mean, he came back for holidays and stuff like that. Ah, and okay, been here, but, but but he stayed in Italy, so he's become an he, Italian. And he's still there. He's still there, yes. He lives in Venice. 
Same girlfriend? No, he wasted a few. Yes. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So. A rebel. A rebel. Yeah. Right. No. Okay. And no. so, okay. So you went to art school. Yeah, so it was strange. So I had already, I remember, I think it was like age 12 and I decided to become a graphic designer. It's really Why? weird. I don't because know. Because of your mother? Well, probably. Yes, probably. Yeah. I don't Because think. I, I like the, I like the, the idea of this, this, you know, this, this studio where you create stuff. Exactly. And, yeah. And that, that, that was to me like, Wow, that's a great space because it's 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 complicated to create communication, but it's also interesting to come up to a concept where you tell a story in this you know piece of paper. It's it it it, uh, it felt interesting, and I was like, okay, uh, I did Waldorf school, so I was you know I I had this idea, and that this the the danger a little bit of the Waldorf school is they make you feel fantastic. They What's make the you Waldorf feel like school? well, the Vrije School, the, the yeah, mm -hmm. Waldorf school. I think it's a kind of a Anthroposophical uh, philosophy, and uh, and it's a great school because it's it it has this it has a strange philosophy. It's, a, it's the danger is a little bit becomes a little bit like a sect. It's a bit you know different, uh, but the good thing is that they make you you know they really try to develop all your perspectives, and and if you're a little bit creative, then you can really do anything you want there. And they also make you feel like you're the best in the world. So you come to art school and then the first thing you notice, oh, God, I'm really terrible. <laughs> I, I'm not very good at this. Uh, but uh, so I, ch I chose to go to art school. But then you were prone to that kind of uh, thinking anyway. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, yeah. Well, I, I mean, mean uh, I, I see you as a kid in, the, in your mother's studio <laughs> yeah, saying, yeah. I, uh, I can't I do this. it. Just, I hate this. <laughs> and then you go to Waldorf school and they tell you, you're awesome, you're wonderful. Yeah. And then yeah. you go to a real school, sorry. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> and they'll, yes. And they'll yeah. say, um, yeah. we have to tell you something, Mark. Yeah. Well, they didn't tell me, but the, but, but I felt. How that did you know? How I, did you feel? But how did you make you? Did they make you feel? Because were you really, or was it just insecurity? No, was it, it was just, insecurity, of course. I mean, it, that's the, the that's the the great experience when you move from you know your very safe home space and you go out and you go out to study. I mean, the big jump is, of course, now you're you're on your own. You have to you have to fix it and you have to and you're confronted not so much with teachers i mean you know the, the funny thing was in art school i mean they would never really tell you stuff they would just you know you would you would put to work but you were confronted with your peers and the peers were much better than i thought i thought i was i mean this is also about perception but, but if yeah right if you look back is do you think if you look because sometimes you look back at your own work later and then you think oh it's actually you know, not that bad or or are you still no, like no was i was really, really bad <laughs> it was really bad it was really bad it was because it you, you, so you come in this position where you're trying to figure out you know what am i supposed to do here and that's the whole problem i recognize this with students now of course you know it's the same thing it's this is really when you come from and this is maybe also the problem with education the way we educated our children is that they think they have to do the things the way they are supposed to do it and that's of course totally not interested interesting they have to they have to you know forget all that and forget about what's supposed to be and that's of course that i had to learn there in art school because they there's no supposed to do. There's no supposed to the best solution how to do it. It's just you know uh, let go of yourself and uh, and try to come up with with new ideas. Was that were you stimulated in that respect? Did the school help you figure that out? Yeah, you but you yeah, but no one can help you figure something. I mean, this is really something you have to do yourself. Yeah, but the school can give you the environment to yeah. figure it out. Yeah, that, that depends very much on the teacher. Of course, there were some teachers and, and the best, I think for me, the most effective teachers were the ones that really pushed you beyond your limits. So they really gave you so much uh, tasks that you were over, over drowning in, you know, an, an unreachable goal. So he would tell me like, okay, you know, tomorrow I want to see like uh, 40 self-portraits. And then of course, you know, the, 
the first 10, you struggle, you try to make them pretty. And then after number 15 or 20, you forget about what is supposed to be. You just start doing because you, there's no time. And that's actually the moment where you discover that you cross the boundary. And that's intentional. And that's intentional. And that's very efficient. I mean, yeah. it's, it, it, I mean, that it's takes absolutely. courage. Uh, I mean, it takes courage, uh, uh, you know, from, from a teacher yeah to yeah. piss off your students yeah and then have them discover the reason for it later yeah. The, yeah. often years later like oh by the yeah. way that was really important but at the moment everybody's like i never told him no he was the best teacher i have ever had you never told him no i because at that moment i was just hating him <laughs> <laughs> isn't that, but, isn't that yeah, amazing that's amazing yeah but that's yeah. that's really and and you immediately as a student you immediately recognize the 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 the, the teachers who who try to please you and they are no use to you. I mean they don't help you because they they should not be there to please you. They should be pushing you beyond your boundaries. That that's what they supposed to do. So yeah. that's actually that was a big lesson for me. Work hard <laughs> because so, you are well. I because you're a teacher as well yeah, yeah yeah so how how do you translate that experience into your own teaching is that it? yeah so i i mean th that principle of uh, uh when it's possible so the the the, the problem is now that uh, unfortunately in a lot of school situations actually you know the assignments that you create are not always your own i mean they are supposed to be following so many regulations it's totally regulated uh and then the problem is that it's that regulation is never my regulation so that's a bit more difficult in the so you have to create that space uh, um, uh, but uh it depends a little bit on the school of course where you are so mm -hmm. Are you able to? But I really bring that along. So, so, mm. so, so, trying to push people beyond their limits. So I'm, I'm now uh, um, supervising some students trying to make their thesis, and and they go crazy with my feedback because I keep pushing them, and some it works, and sometimes I have to figure out, you know, that doesn't work for everyone. Of course, I mean, you mm -hmm. have to, you cannot. There's no mold, so you have to be. Empathic well, to the person right. uh, exactly. in front of you, because I can imagine that for some, it actually you blocks know, them. Might, yeah, yeah, it might yeah. block them and might make them so yeah. insecure about uh, yeah. what their abilities that yes. uh, might not even um, be able to. Yeah. Uh, they, they won't survive, basically. Uh, uh, no, no, but, but I think that's what it. So it's not about you know over. It's it's more subtle than just overloading people with tasks mm. oh, i mean okay. it's not that simple it's really <laughs> i'm i mean it 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 is i mean that is part of it but of, the, of course the biggest biggest element is that you don't let go eh? so you as a role your teacher uh, 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 role as a teacher is to to keep them close uh, and 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 learn what what they need to 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 push the boundary but your goal is still to push the boundary, eh? push the, bring them, yeah. uh, make them cross boundaries. That is your role, I think. But don't let go. But don't let go. Mm. No, because you're you have a responsibility. Right. So, going back to your uh, art school. <laughs> yes. What? So, are there things uh, you know? So you you went through art school. I mean, you graduated. Yeah. Yep. So. Yep. So, you, you know, somehow, you were good enough. When, yes. Was there a moment that you started realizing, oh, okay, yeah. Yeah, yeah, definitely. I mean, uh, and I mean, I had this this very classical, you know, process of, you know, the first two years you're struggling and then at some point you figure out a way to, hey, this is easy. Now I know what to do or now I know what's, what is what works and then you become a little bit complacent and then you go out because then you have to do an internship and then you discover, oh, no. I'm wrong. I, I still don't get it. Again. Uh, so you have to you have to go through all these stages, and at some point, uh, I discovered also that collaboration or working together. And I had a, a, a partner which with whom I worked very closely, and she was, and that was also. I mean, she was such a, a total complementary to my skills, and she was just. I'm my problem is sometimes I think too much. I want to you know really 
get you know the 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 depth of what the meaning of things are and she was just she would just do but that combination was great because then i would be able to make sense of what we were actually doing so the combination of just blindly creating stuff without a real clear plan and then discovering you know what is this actually about what and the sense making that combination was fantastic so working in a duo, which made it, made it sometimes difficult for the school, for, for the art school, because they were like, how do we judge you two? Because who did what? And we were, we don't oh, know. Right. And that, because this is also a problem with the, the complete individualistic style so, of uh, art so, school. So, so hang on. So you say it wasn't, uh, that wasn't supposed, you weren't supposed to do that as a duo. The school didn't, that wasn't part of an assignment. But no. you chose to work as a duo yeah. because yeah. Yeah. you discovered that that, that was fantastic. really worked for both of you. Yeah. And then the yeah. school said, what are you doing? You're like, you're two persons. You're not one. Yeah. 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 That was difficult for them, but, uh, but it How depended a little bit. Well, they, 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 well, we didn't care. So they had to cope. <laughs> we just, we thought like, you know, we really like the way we are uh, progressing in this way. So this is our path. And uh, you just adjust and um, you just write something down and you figure out who did what and I, I don't care. We just go on. So that, that worked very well for us. And they probably had some trouble in putting it in the right boxes in the, the school regulations and the, and, the, and the administration, but we didn't really care much about that. So it was an amazing time. Sounds like it. Uh, yes. Being able to just not to care about what the well, people who are judging you in the end actually think. Yeah, well, that's also the moment where you, when you're in that state that actually you will you will be successful because this is where you, when, as, and the, the biggest problem, I think, uh, and maybe that's even worse now, but, you know, uh, and that's in any study probably, but we are so much focused on our uh, uh, image and how are we perceived and, and maybe that's even worse now. Eh? We're so very conscious of ourselves that that. But you know, the moment when you forget that, when you're uh, what they call in flow or however you want to call it, but you're at a, in a state where you don't care. This is the moment where you where you are uh, on the top of your creativity. Then what happened? <laughs> <laughs> and then what happened yeah well yeah. so um so uh, yeah i graduated, graduated. yeah and, and, uh, we, we and what happened we started to uh so as a duo we as thought, a duo hey, yeah right. as a duo we graduated as, as a duo and we thought oh, okay let's uh this is meek waldo uh by the way i think it's important to mention her um and and so we had this idea okay yeah you know, we're ready so let's uh, start a studio and uh, sit by the phone and let's wait until they call us. And no one called. That was really strange. <laughs> Where's, so let's pick up the phone again. Oh, no, still no one. No, so, uh, so that was interesting. And, but we would, we, we would just do very silly, small assignments and stuff and, and create stuff. And then um, we ended up because there was a, I did an internship in a, in a studio in Amsterdam and, one of the guys, Bob van Dijk, great, great designer, he said, okay, you know, you have to come to Studio Dunbar in The Hague, design studio, and, uh, and join us. And I said, well, we're with two, so can we come? And he said, okay. So we had this project for a museum, and then we, and then we never left there, or never. Well, I stayed there for seven years. Mick left the Studio Dunbar. Studio yeah. Dunbar, yeah, mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. So I stayed there for seven years, and then I... Uh, Decided, oh, I can do this much better. I'll do this myself. You decided, so, you yes. Uh, when well, at the moment, uh, so my um, my my girlfriend uh, Dolly was pregnant, and I thought that's a great moment to start your own uh, agency. So uh, okay. so we started, <laughs> and, but I, I, I it took me quite a while because there were a few people that I wanted to bring along because I didn't want to go alone. So uh, why not? Um, because I really had much fun with some of the people there, and I thought, like, okay, let's let's do this together because we, we need a band. Mm -hmm. So we created the band, which was Ping Pong Design. This is actually where that started. Mm -hmm. So, uh, so I am interested in the, <laughs> the, the, the yeah, with this sort of the side note of this is where 
your girlfriend was pregnant. Yes. Uh, <laughs> because obviously that is not the right time to start well you know every, everybody Crazy. tells you you don't 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 you know you you, mm-hmm. you have a stable income now you have mm-hmm. a house i had we bought a house wow you know it was all very very privileged very nice very good and then start your own company it was not very logical even in i think uh yeah 2000 summer 2000 economy was not crazy i mean it was kind of not very well it was okay but it was not perfect uh, so it was not the most logical thing to do, but it felt like, okay, now, and I already had, had been waiting because I wanted to bring Barry along, which is the greatest, craziest creative mind I know. And he had to come, but he was not ready yet. So I, it, I think I waited a year or something and by talking cons- constantly, you know, come on, let's go, let's go, let's go, come on. Uh, he finally said, okay, let's go. So, uh, that's how that happened. <laughs> right. And um, um, so I can imagine that uh, were, the, were these stressful times or were, were, was it actually uh, oh, it was was great. This like great times? Yeah. Yeah, it was great. I mean, we had not much to eat or we had not much income, but we had, so we had to invent, uh, the, we had a problem because we, of course, we, we had this contract signed with the agency that we were not allowed to go in the same market or, uh, so that was all complicated. And I remember one of the partners of the studio, they, he would go uh, call all the clients and say, hey, you're not allowed to work with them. Remember, we have a contract. Because studio done work. They was afraid that we would steal their clients yeah. and they were right because we would otherwise probably have done that but uh, um was there a big and fight so, was it a big fight i mean was it were they no it was not you? a big fight there well, of course i mean i can imagine that if you have a studio with uh what was it uh, 28 people and then five people say hey let's do this ourselves mm. That can be a little bit annoying. So they were probably not that happy with that, which I can understand. But of course, we didn't care much about that. So we, uh, but we had great fun. So we had to invent ourselves. And remember, we we wanted to start up, and we needed, of course, to get attention a little bit. And there was this art exhibition in Barcelona. We thought, like, hey, let's go to Barcelona. We want to go there. But then to get in there, we had to have a portfolio to present our work. So we thought like, well, we don't have a portfolio because we cannot show anything that we've done in the past because we're not allowed to to to, uh, to show that. So we, we invented the portfolio and we had to also um, tell them that, that we had already had some exhibitions. So we created a, a fake exhibition. So we whole, invented the whole idea that we had a fantastic exhibition, uh, exhibition at, uh, at Gallery Bunk. And Jan Bunk was one of the partners. So we created a virtual uh, fake uh, exhibition and we made pictures or we uh, Photoshop pictures of an opening with a big band. And it was all fake. And hey, we sent on, that hang in. Hang on, hang on, hang on. <laughs> I'm Go trying to make it a little bit complicated. Sorry. <laughs> Re- rewinding, rewinding. Yes. Wait. So, yes. Um, how, where, when did you decide to? <laughs> no, I don't know when, but why and how and how did that go about? So you, you, you said, let's just go and lie to yes. these people and, and, and we'll get yeah. away with it. That's, that's fine. Uh, well, we didn't know if we would get away with it, but we thought it was just great fun to invent the idea that we uh-huh. had done an exhibition in somewhere, a fake gallery named Bunk and uh, <laughs> that we had this fantastic party. And it was also like, it would be nice if this would have happened. And let's just make that because we had nothing to do. We were waiting. We were or were waiting. We had not much clients. So we thought like, let's just do this as a project and see how far we get. Amazing. And we got pretty far. So we were invited and we had, and so then we had to produce all the stuff because we had only just Photoshopped it and then ship it off to Barcelona and then get invited to the opening, of course. In, in and, and you got invited. Yes. And we got invited and we had a great party and we drank all the gin, I think. And uh, yeah. did they ever? I mean, what, what happened? Well, they they had great fun because we told them, of course, when oh, we arrived. Ooh. You said, yeah, and they were ah. really laughing. They were really happy. Uh, they thought it was great. So, they yeah, were they were not like what? We no, they were like, ah, oh, that's great. People. Well done. <laughs> <laughs> I think maybe they were just polite. 
I'm not sure. I, I don't know, but <laughs> for any, you know, anyone starting a design career or a design agency, and this is some yeah, great advice. It. Take this fake advice. It. Fake it until Just you make it. it. Yes, it works. Yeah, it's great. But is it's there a effective. truth? I mean, I mean, I, you know, is there a deeper truth to that? It's not very deep, but it's true. <laughs> <laughs> no, just, you know, create the, so I think, and this is of course something that I have to remember myself also. I mean, it's not like, okay, you've done this once, so now you're cured. Now the rest of your life mm. will be successful. You have to do this all the time. Well, I'm saying this because, I mean, so, you know, because one of the biggest problems for anyone starting out is that you haven't done it yet. Yeah. In your case, it was sort of like you couldn't show what you've done. So it's oh. even worse because you've done it, but you can tell yeah. because you did do the work, yeah. but you can't show it. Either you haven't done it because you didn't have yeah. the opportunity, but people will ask you, can I show, you know, show me your work? Yeah. Um, so that attitude, I think, is important, mm -hmm. right? The yes. attitude of go and create it. Yeah. Yeah. And where did that sort of is is was was your partner Barry because you introduced him? Yeah, yeah, of course, he was creative. very important in 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 uh, in in pushing us to uh, to uh, not not care about it. I mean, it was a bit exciting, a bit scary, but we were like, okay, you know, we have nothing to lose. So why why wouldn't we do this? And why? And it was great fun. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, so. Okay, so you went to Barcelona. Uh, how is that? Was that part of sort of the um, you know the, the the success that was going? And, and I, mean, I know so ping pong, it's been, you know, it's been a very successful company. Mm -hmm. um, is that was that the start of the success story, or? or? Um, well, it was the start of the of of. The, it was the start of the culture of uh, of us, of uh, the four of us. So we were with four partners. And it was the start of uh, trying to understand what are we trying to do uh, and, and, and what do we want to do. And it was, of course, a part of it was, you know, create, you know, new realities. And, and not only in a... Uh, you know, uh, to make fun, but also, you know, to create new re realities also for, for our clients and customers. So, and of course, we would not copy that literally, but we were, were very curious to see, you know, if we if we work for a Rabobank or any other, you know, corporate client, we always would try to to see what kind of reality, and even if it's not just, just not there, but what kind of reality would fit with this kind of, team or this kind of organization what reality should they be creating and we would try to design that and of course the, the problem with that is, is is and that is also you know what what you know at some point i i want to get out of the whole idea of advertising or com uh, commercial communication because you're creating promises and actually no one cares because you know that that's that so there was a big disconnect between that reality creating that we are uh, that we we honestly believe that was a good cre uh, reality that that would really fit them, but it was completely disconnected, of course, because we were creating that reality. They were not creating it; we were creating it for them. So it was just a big promise, and they really liked it because it, you know it had good you know rep it helped their reputation and image and all these kind of, kind of things. But there was a complete disconnect between what was happening in that organization and that reality that we painted. For them, there was nothing there. And also the creation process, it was silly. I mean, it was, we had a great time creating those realities. Remember, we made alternative realities for the Rabobank, really interesting. It's a Dutch cooperative bank. And we really took the idea of cooperative bank and ran with it. And we created these, you know, uh, scenarios which have that could have been reality for them but you know they said oh great thank you very much really interesting thank you we put it in in this drawer and then we never talk about it they were like mm, what are we doing wrong here and this is also where the the moment came where i thought like you know i want to make an impact and i of course it's great to paint realities but if it's if it's just you know fake or if it's just superstitious uh, uh, superficial but it doesn't um, make any impact it doesn't change any realities then 
it's useless. So why so why did you want to make an impact? Where where does that come from? I mean, you because it sounds like that's it. You know, it's that's the way it goes. That's how a lot of agencies will work that way. Yeah. yeah. But you said yeah. it's not enough. No, it's not enough in the sense that the that I really believe that we found something in creating those scenarios that we thought like, but this is really something that that is worthwhile. Right? The whole sense making process of of getting there. Uh, that we were doing in our team, it was a waste to do that in our team and keep the doors closed. We were like, but this is a fantastic process. It's, I mean, uh, why are we doing this with the doors closed? So we would start inviting more and more clients in that process, which sometimes worked. But we we also discovered that, you know, it's not about us creating that reality. How, wh- how, what if we would be in a situation where we could help these teams or these these groups of people inventing those uh, scenarios and and designing those scenarios because the thing is that as soon as you try to uh, become and and paint this 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 new reality or future possibilities you will move in that direction but if someone else is doing that for you you will never be able to move in that direction because you're not part of the discovery process and and but it's not answering your question, of course. Uh, why? Oh, yeah. I, I, why you? <laughs> yeah. Why me? Yeah. Um, well, this is of uh, this is also a little bit my 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 probably my my teacher or my or my my uh, supporter or facilitator heart. That I'm I'm much more curious, and this has also been my role in ping pong design, where I was like, it's not so much like that I want to be this, this, this artist creating this fantastic new reality. I want to enable that, 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 that enabling that situation where you're together with, with a group of people, whoever they are and build on each other's ideas and, 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 you know, in, in this, and get in this situation, in this flow where you forget everything, where there's no limitations and, and of course, you have to, you know, sometimes check reality. But there is also this this energy and excitement that when you are in that space, you can do fantastic things. And but, I'm I, yeah. I I get that. But there are, <laughs> there are a lot of people who would not or and were not considering that. And when are we talking? With, with, what year is this? Where is this the? Uh, uh this was like, uh, uh, yeah, uh, two thousand. 10 something like that so mm-hmm. we were already on our way as a as a studio like 10 years something like that yeah right okay so and at that time there were plenty of people who were not thinking that way so what do you think made you feel that way or have that urge or have that need to do things differently you, um, is there is there something? I mean, I do hear in some of your stories uh, that you are more like your brother than you might think you are, <laughs> <laughs> in a different way. Yeah, but uh, I think your brother be very proud of you for your for um, <laughs> for inventing a, uh, a a show and then uh, and then um, and using that uh, to um, to go to Barcelona, but. Um, is there something, is that, is there some connection? Is there some need to prove yourself differently? Is there a need to, is it, uh, uh, is it part of it? Cause you are, you know, you are, you're a thinker and you kind of want to kind of understand how things work. Mm. Uh, is, is that, is that it? Because if you don't. Yeah. Then... So, but of course that, that, that's one part of it. The other part is then, then making an impact. I mean, that, that, that surely that is, that is my, my, my interest, but it's not about image. It's not about that. I want to be, you know, this is my idea and I created this new insight. It, that impact is really related to, um, bringing a group of people together, different minds, different ideas, different, different ways of thinking and then uh finding a way to make that work to make to to uh, so to make that engine kick off and go moving uh, and, is, and start 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 creating is the is the little boy still there 
the one that says uh, to his friends, get out. You're ruining everything. <laughs> Just let me. Is that no, still there? yeah. Is it yeah, totally that is there. Yeah, yeah. And that, that so there. How does that really... manifest itself if it's if that boy is still there? Mm, then I need to shut the door or go out or go somewhere and try to think through. Um, I, I'm, I'm, I need some time sometimes to, uh, to hit the broke and break or, uh, have some, um, how do you call that? Have a pause to, um, to, how do you call that? That it, it needs incubation and I, or I need incubation. So sometimes I need some moment to, uh, because you can get, uh, uh, bogged down in the day to day. Uh, operations or the day-to-day uh, patterns, and then uh, and 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 then it's not easy to in- incubate. So you need well uh, downtime because you still. Or I need downtime because you still want to understand how things work. You still want to kind of uh, you know take things apart and uh, see yeah. how it works. Uh, you know, I I know. So it's it's part of your interest in what you would call uh, complexity. Mm-hmm. Is that is that sort of something that you can, if you look back at uh, you know, you know the, your career, your life, uh, is there, are there things that you say, yeah, yeah, there's a there's a clear pattern, or uh, can you? Um... Well, there are there there are a few patterns that that you know. I, I remember I would also uh, feel the responsibility to keep things together. So I was had a role in my family. Mm-hmm especially with my parents throwing uh, uh, bread through the windows right. uh, to, 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 at some point I, I became less scared and I thought like, okay, but I can fix this. I had this really strange uh, idea that, that I could fix anything. So I, uh, so the I, fights uh, that your brother had with your parents, you, yeah, that, yeah. That in, in turn kind of created not this. so much with them, but between them. But so you I described wanted... there was a sort of a tension. There was yes, there of- was lo- there was uh, yeah there were quite some tensions. Um, uh, my parents had this kind of love hate uh, relationship, so very intense. Uh, but at some point that that broke down. Uh, it became more difficult. My mother went ill, so she had a disease, uh, uh, multiple sclerosis, which is a kind of progressive disease, and she lost it. You know, she, she became even quite old for 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 the that disease she became uh, she, she she lived until 65 um but in the meanwhile the the, the relation i mean that that changes huh? so you know your your my father became like a nurse but a love relationship or a nursing relationship that's completely different and that didn't really work my mother was very depressed and very also the disease changes also your brain a little bit so she became very bitter and 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 difficult, and uh, and my father uh, had some affairs and stuff like that, and then he got also a child with another woman, so it was really complex. And I thought I could, I could you know organize that. I had this really naive idea that I that I had graduated and I had written my thesis, so I thought like you know with my brain I can do I can fix everything. So I had I had this idea. This was um, no one asked me to do it. I I just did that. So I thought I I needed to fix that or to organize it in such a way that it was pleasant for everybody. Yeah, I'm, I'm I I want to build harmony. That is also that is a pattern. Yeah? So I I, I hmm. and 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 you know maybe professionally productive harmony, but 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 harmony is really something that I thrive. I remember as a small boy I would I would join parties and I would never speak because I knew that I would speak up. Then my mother would realize that I was are you still up? Are you still in the room? You know, please go to your room. But you know I would but I would really enjoy being silently sitting on a table like a fly on the wall during all these crazy parties and follow the discussions and 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 you know make sure that everybody had something to drink that everybody would stay i would want sometimes these parties to last forever because i really enjoyed being there without being there so harmony is really something that 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 i think drives me in a way uh i'm not sure if it should be called harmony but it's really where you where you where that energy is being on the right level and how did you um how did that 
kind of uh, manifest itself when you were leading uh, ping pong design, your design studio? Uh, well, that didn't always work out, of course. <laughs> I wasn't. I would, I, I would also create problems, of course, and 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 be mm -hmm. very uh, not the easiest boss. I think sometimes because I, I, yes, what you say about this frustrating boy, get up, don't ruin this. Uh, so I would, I would have the same problems with it as well. So I was protective as well as trying to create harmony, but. Uh, but yeah, but the, the, the problem sometimes with an agency or a studio is also you know, struggling with both uh, responsibility and, and you cannot hide if you're, because you, the problem also, that's also I think a, a problem sometimes with leadership where you are the, the founder then, uh, and you have a big mouth, then people start trying to figure out what you want them to do. Right? So you get in that same pitfall. And, and then, you know, I don't know always what's the best solution. So then I would just, you know, start being very directive, which, of course, didn't help. So that, that, that's also where, where the whole idea of servant leadership, I had no conceptions of what that means or how, how do you enable others if they are just waiting for you to tell them what to do. And I, apparently I created a situation where that sometimes became difficult. So you've you've experienced leadership, uh, you know, being led by others uh, in a uh, in a more uh, um, sort of a hierarchy situation. Yeah. But you also, but you've also, you know, you are a leader, and you've been a, a manager, and you've been a leader. Um, so you've had all these experience of you know what you know what's you know also your own kind of limitations, other people's limitations. Yeah. Where are you now? when you think about leadership what is the what is the where are you where are you what is your thing what is the latest thinking on this topic yeah so so i think that so so i i really uh believe in the in the importance of empowering huh? so finding ways to empower people to uh to um to, to, to manage their their way forward. So I had to create a situation where they don't have to think so much about, and this is also something that I have to teach myself. Eh? So, uh, and, and, and uh, the only way to get forward is of course, start doing things. And this is something we, we discussed a lot with also with you are what you do is, is eh? so what you are actually doing is actually what brings you along. So I think th there are a few things uh, important. One is that, that, we have a kind of a difficult, uh, uh, we have a challenge in overcoming the stereotype of leadership. Uh, so, and this is of course, um, uh, what leadership means and, and, and actually, so it's not about how you explain it. It's really about the, the kind of the, 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 the mean or the baseline of leadership is the stereotype of leadership. And that determines how people talk about it and also how they behave beyond it. And of course, of course, when you think more deeply about it, then, you know, there are all kinds of, you know, interesting thoughts about it. But the heuristic, uh, the kind of the, the standard ref, uh, uh, reflexive mind that, that kind of interprets uh, uh, leadership has a big impact on how we behave on this. And this is not only effective to the followers, right? so the people that have to be led, or they think they have to be led, but also to the people who think they are leaders. And that is, I think that is, that is such a, I, I really believe in the importance uh, of, of you know, how the brain works, because if we don't understand how the brain works, we cannot change much uh, in our, you know, at, at least we should be conscious about it. And I think we should first become more conscious of the, stereotypes of leadership uh, because if we don't then uh, we will have very bad leadership and very bad followership for the next coming uh, 200 years so i think that that is a very important element that 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 needs to be uh discussed and i think just by talking about it already that that becomes then we switch a little bit to our bit more conscious brain but the heuristic is still there and the heuristic is is uh, a very determining uh Bad leaders and bad followers. So that I think is one element. Uh, so how, how do we? I mean, talking about it is one way. Obviously, uh, creating language. Yes, uh, I think that's really important. Um, but how do we? 
what is your idea of what's what's next what's coming i mean is it something we is it something we do or is it a natural evolution um where where are we going with leadership um, and followership yeah so i think that starts of course with um first of all starting uh, 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 understanding better about followership what that means and what people need and what what actually helps people to to feel uh, supported in what they do because that's the whole goal of leadership. Uh, when you, so you you want you want to create a situation in which people are flourishing, and 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 so if we understand what that how that works, then actually maybe we can abolish the whole idea of leadership as a as a whole or figure out other ways to to create. You know what is what is the best way to create that situation where people can flourish? Um, so, uh, so overcoming the heuristics or creating new heuristics, that's also fine. Uh, this is, uh, I mean, how the brain works. So when, when, we, when we abolish one heuristic, we'll replace it with another one. That's also fine. Uh, but, but then, of course, understanding, you know, what, what do people need to, to create this flow or create this, this, this flourishing uh, and productivity, however you want to call it, but create a situation where people can thrive. Um, and, and, and of course, one element of that is more diversity. So, uh, part of the stereotype is of course that we have a stereotype of what leaders should be and they are probably white and male and old. Um, mm -hmm. and so that's also a stereotype mm -hmm. that, that, that really, but the, the problem is as long as we accept or uh, acknowledge those uh, stereotypes we can never move forward because they will stand in the way of moving forward and it's not really about breaking them down but i think it really is about putting new examples next to it alternatives or new new, new better solutions but is it an evolution is it something that we we need to do is it is it is it, is it, is it de, de, does it depend on us taking action or do you think it is happening do we see it happen and is it a natural evolution and, and is is it inescapable or is it somewhere in between uh i don't have a crystal ball but i think as long uh and so you you will probably need uh, uh to disrupt this in order to overcome that heuristic or to but do you see changes reflexes? happening at the moment are there things that that are changing are there things moving in that direction or is it static? well i try I, I try i hope to i you know let's let's try to look at this as uh, as positive as possible and of course there are signs of, of you know the, the crazy thing is we're in a situation i think that is also a sign of change huh? so we're in a situation where there are a lot of very toxic leaders and they are quite dominant at the moment but at the same time we are really you know challenging that so i think maybe part of the change is that that we get first we get this really big uh, polar polarization between you know the, the the ultimate one way of looking at things and the ultimate the other way of looking at things so so the, the more it's stretched apart or Disrupt, disrupted or the more it's it it is it's uh it, it's uh in crisis you know that that brings a lot of opportunity to change for the good so we need leaders who can bring harmony yes but uh just uh, uh, yeah it sounds a bit uh too I'm nice like, oh well i'm, I'm, li I'm linking it to your <laughs> yeah to again the little yeah, boy, you know, but harmony is it. not a goal in itself. So harmony is not a goal in itself. It's just a means to get to get to a situation. And I mean, so uh, harmony is uh, is when when the situation is is in a good spot, then you need to create the harmony or maintain the harmony in order to make it continue. But to get there, you probably you cannot you know you cannot change anything with harmony. I mean, you need disharmony, and so this is. The, I really like the idea. This is something that has recently much more in my head. I don't know. I'm thinking a lot about these these ideas of paradoxes, and I think mm -hmm. you need the two. There, the two. Um, we should stop thinking about this is good and that is bad. We should consider more the extremes of things and, and constantly be aware of, you know, what is the 
the the the the end point on this side and what's the end point on the other side so to really think of paradoxes because we have to navigate those and as long as we have to think of two points we have to constantly position ourselves where on the continuous line between the two do we have to put ourselves and it challenges us to think to, uh, and to 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 you know to to change course constantly as as soon as we start um forgetting it or think okay it's only about this we get dogmatism and dogmatism doesn't really lead to the right way so i think harmony is in in constantly being aware of where are you between the line uh, mm -hmm. in, in, on, on that line on that, on that in the continuous my somehow i um that brings back an image from this conversation in the start of the conversation where you were talking about your father and uh, being a musician and uh, the modern music I, I, do you talk about your father about this, about the disharmony, and uh, because in that, this yeah. com the composers, the composers that that you mentioned were really dealing yeah. with harmony and disharmony, right? Yes, very much. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So. They and they were, of course. I mean, that that also had to do with, I think, the romanticism, uh, romanticism uh, of the early 1900s, where they had to disrupt, had a sort of like the twelve tones, twelve tone. Uh, chromatic uh, music I mean, I, I'm not a musician so I'm no don't really know how to call it but they're so they really had to disrupt that whole idea of the classical music eh, of, of being nice and being harmonious uh, but of course that doesn't mean that you know classical harmonious music is bad and and modern music is good and that 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 idea that is really I think a, a silly idea of, of of the past where we think like it's either this or it's either that Right. And we should really think much more. And it's it's not very nice. It's, it, to be radical is nice to be, you know, only on the left or only on the right. I think it's important to constantly think about these things. Because the problem is as soon as we get stuck in one side, we are not able to see the other, you know, good things of the other part. So we have to constantly navigate that. Right. So the future leader or the leader that we need is the one able to navigate both, both of the... The, you know, yes. the ends of the spectrum. Yeah, making sense of, of how to deal with these paradoxes and actually acknowledging the fact that there are paradoxes, that there's no one way or there's no one simple. Right. Uh, so I think that... That's, like we need uh, bad to have good. Yeah. Well, yeah, in a way, yes. You need, you need to consider... Um, uh, you know what what are what are the other perspectives and and i think so uh, the idea of diversity is that we that we don't say okay all white all guys are bad you know that's not a point in that uh, oh we only need women or we only need it's silly we have to be considered you know what are the elements the good elements of of of, of some of the older leadership styles that we can still use I remember that teacher who who really pushed me he was a very he was like a dictator but he did some things good. He did a lot of things bad, but he did some things very good. He really, and I picked that out. Uh, and I think that being conscious of, of, of those perspectives, I think is a really important role that you have to play. So last question, and we get to the end of the yes, um, sorry. interview. No, I, I really enjoy uh, the conversation. Um, what's next for you? What's in your agenda? What's next? What's the uh... my agenda is is um, empty and full, so it's a little bit of paradox. My my my, uh, so I have to challenge myself to uh, to to pivot again. I do this quite often, so I have to pivot again, which I'm really looking forward to. Uh, I have to grab my strength also a little bit. Uh, I have to break the harmony also a little bit. And uh, I always liked the uh, the idea of uh, the born from Munchausen and uh, pushing your uh, pushing yourself up from your bootstraps. So the whole that that crazy idea, which is impossible, but it's still possible. It's by when you move in the direction you want to go, then you will go there. So you but you have to just set your goal and 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 you know set a point in time where you have to where you want to go and you will go there. And then try to forget thinking. Too much <laughs> <laughs> sounds like solid advice yes. um so thank you very much for uh for this interview and uh thank you Arne. i really enjoyed it nice, yeah, nice me too conversation thank you and um 
Well, I'm, I'm looking forward to uh, continue this conversation, maybe over a, a beer or because I, Beer's I, always good. I like to know more about that little boy who said, uh, get out of my room. I, <laughs> you're ruining everything. <laughs> exactly. We'll talk about that later, my friend. Good, good, good. <laughs> All, right. All right. Thank you.